Welcome everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and uh, today I thought maybe we could have some fun. Are you guys ready to have some good old paper fun? I was goofing around with a, a little index card idea. I had a little uh, pile of index cards here. Maybe these aren't too hard to source for anybody. Um, I think I got these at the Dollar Tree. They're not super thick, but you get a, a bunch in a pack for a dollar and um, sometimes you can find these at thrift stores, places like that. Sometimes you can find them in multiple colors. Um, I think everybody's pretty familiar with an index card, but it's a great place to start for making a little notebook. And if this is something that you want to make, um, I can show you a way to use uh, jump rings as the uh, rings uh, so that this uh, entire item is not super fat, you could add it to a journal or keep it as a standalone. But uh, it's certainly smaller than the big heavy rings that uh, we normally work with when we're making a ring bound journal. And um, let me just show you those if you've never seen them, but you probably have. And um, like here's an example. They're a lot bigger, obviously. Uh, jump rings from jewelry making are a lot smaller. And I'm going to show you a way to keep them together so the opening doesn't come apart and let your papers fall out because that seems to be the biggest bane of existence of jump rings is that they tend to uh, let your stuff out. So it's a quick and easy way to handle that um, and let me show you. So okay so what I did was I just took two regular um, index cards and made the front and the back cover. Oh, oh, and I want to remember to show you this before I forget. From um, the beginning or two, day, two videos ago um, I was making some petaled envelopes and this one, I uh, glued the petals down, layered them up, and then I mod podged over top, and then I layered a um, one ply uh, napkin a, um, over at the top. So I was gonna show you the finished product. Let me show you that under better light. Uh, so this is after two days of drying. Yes, it took a lot longer to dry because there was glue underneath the tissue paper, and I, maybe I put too much glue, but um, I think it actually, it, it gives it a really cool look. It, um, it's a more wrinkly look. Everything is sealed down very well and you can certainly come along and just sand off the edges if you wanted to do that and then start your project from there. A little more sanding because of the uh, Mod Podge, but not bad, not bad. And you could trim it with scissors too. That's another way to get that off of there. But I just want to show you what that came out like. I think it was uh, um, a success. It's a completely li different look than the other one. Let me just show you the the other one was whoops, without any Mod Podge, with Mod Podge and a napkin. And there should be one more here. There it is, with just Mod Podge. Boop, 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 boop. Can't pick it up. Trying to pick it up. Got it. Okay with Mod Podge. So just Mod Podge, no Mod Podge on top, and Mod Podge and a uh, tissue. So you get three different looks, but you can see the petalage through all of it. I just wanted to show you that that does dry much clearer than, probably even still has some drying to do where you see those white spots. It's probably built up glue. Okay, let's get on to this project. Moving right along. Okay, so very um, easy start. Um, just wrap these with any uh, paper of choice. You can use scrapbook paper, you can use a book page. Um, and I, this one I used um, newspaper. I just had some old, beautiful, caramelized colored newspaper. So you might have some newspaper hanging around from days gone by. If anybody still gets the newspaper, maybe out in the garage, maybe it's wrapped storing something. And I put a pretty little bird image from a, a book, a field guide on the inside. And then um, I put some eyelets here. The eyelets are not mandatory, but I thought they gave a nice decorative finish to it. Put a little uh, piece of cotton muslin on the top with a sticker and um, just put some, I think, 10, um, 10 um, index cards on the inside. And then in the back, I've got this little guy uh, from a book page. I thought it was just sort of pretty and he went well there. And then the back is also um, newspaper. Okay, so let's make this guy. All right, or someone, basically it's gonna be the same concept. I'm just gonna look for a piece of paper that is relatively thin that I can wrap around um, an index card very easily. And I'm just gonna use what I have on my desk. And what I do is I, this is actually how the fundals were born. I used to um, put piles of, let me back up so you can see a little better, piles of paper, old book pages, all different types together in um, collections so that I would have different things to draw from. And that's how 
basically the fundals were born, I thought, gee, maybe some other people would like to enjoy that process too. So here's a nice page. Maybe we can use this page. And the, the front and the back don't even have to be the same paper, although they can be. And um, entirely up to you. Just make sure you have enough to um, do the framing wrap. Let's use this up because it looks like it needs to needs to be something. Okay. We could even put something like that. That's pretty, isn't it? Maybe we'll use that. Will that go around the front? Yeah, I think that'll pretty much make it. That'll be make a really pretty front. Let's let's just work with that. Um, okay, so let's just glue this. Now this whole thing is going to be covered, the index card front to back, so you don't have to worry about what side the lines are on or anything like that. And just go ahead and glue this down with any glue will work here. And now you're just hoping that you put it in the center where it needs to go. I hope that's the right spot. I'm going to see if I can feel it in the back. That looks pretty good. A little over the top, a little hang over the bottom. Looks like that'll work. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I've got enough to actually fold and cover this. Um, normally I would do my, my little folds like that. Well, let's just try that. Um, let me take a little bit of this off. It might be a little long, a little long. We don't need that much. It's a little shy on the sides, but we'll just work with it. We'll see if we can get it to play. If not, maybe we'll pull out some tricks we have that might be able to assist. Um, maybe it's a little bigger there. It's a little bigger. Okay. All right. So that's up. Okay. So let's glue this down. And you can use scrapbook paper, book paper, anything with uh, magazine pages would work well here because it's a thinner paper. Um, Thicker paper can work, it's just a little more fuddly to work with. So if you're going to do this wraparound technique, sometimes thinner paper is your friend here. Okay, let's hold that down in place. Grabs pretty fast once it gets tacky, air dried enough. Okay, oh, yep, stuck to myself, of course, because I'm eternally covered in glue. <laughs> okay, so let's see, how are we doing here? We're, all right, let's... We need some glue now, Pam. You can't just fold it without gluing it. All right, I'm gluing it. I'm gluing it. Okay, this paper was probably a little thick, so I would recommend like a thinner page would be best. Oh, dog snoring. Yep, we hear you, Sunny. We hear you. Okay. And now I'm just going to fold that up. Little crisp corners, making that nice. Okay, that'll grab in a second. And then we'll fold that. Nice crispness there to do. That'll be nice. And I think we have enough here to work it. Okay, we've got a little white on the side. That's okay. We can work with that. And then the side, do we have a little white? Oh, we got a big white. Look at that. And we can work with that too. Okay, so now we have our front cover with a pretty picture on it. And you can, you know, this is entirely de uh, designer's choice, what, how you would like to um, deal with that. Now, um, but that's going to be the same size as our back and you can do the back in something different. It doesn't have to be, I don't have this identical book page again, so it is going to be something different. And this time I think I am going to opt for something a little bit thinner. And I think this is where I'm going to use this lovely book page. So this looks something with a lot of writing on it. I think that looks very good. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Lots of scraps to use up around here. No shortage of that. Uh, but I think in the middle of the scrap world, that's where, where fun happens. You get a lot of uh, amazing things that can happen there. All right. Where is my... I'm feeling for my uh, ruler, which has disappeared yet again. Is it here? No, this is a different ruler. Okay. That's why we have backups. The paper outpost. <laughs> Gotta have the backups. Okay, a little smaller and tilt you so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I would like to leave, say, a good half inch um, with a small project like this. Probably half an inch all the way around would be plenty. Three quarters of an inch. Give you plenty of wiggle room. Okay, yeah, we're in frame. Okay, so I hope you're all having fun. I hope you're getting to play with your, your stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, are you collecting more stuff or are you using up what you have? Mm -hmm. How's it going at your end? I seem to be doing both. Yeah, I, I like to uh, collect and then I like to uh, use it up. So I'm in the use it up mode right now. Yep. 
that's where we're at. Okay. So I'm trying to use up the things that are on my desk. I'll never get through them all. I've in like a day. I have to, I have to go deep diving and clean up all this yet again, yet again. It's not part of my life. Just the way things are around here. Um, now, if you print digi kits out on regular copy white paper, that would be perfect for wrapping a project like this. Um, copy white paper, and you could stencil copy white paper, or you could rubber stamp on it. That would make very pretty uh, wraparound covers if you don't have book pages or things like that, or if you don't have magazine pages. Are you, you, are, you are dreaming. My dog is dreaming. He's having a dream. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Is it squirrels? Is it squirrels? You should just see him when I take him to the park and he sees the squirrels. Oh, it's like all bets are off. Mom, I'm a real dog. Let me go. <laughs> it's like, oh boy. Here we go. There's, there goes my boy. <laughs> um, oh, he's on the leash, so I can't really get that far. But um, Okay, so we have uh, some writing on there, which is kind of cool. So that's going to be the back. This is going to be the front. And they are magically the same size, which makes it um, very user-friendly when you're doing uh, um, uh, working with index cards. They can be your best friend. Okay, so now another thing you can do is you can actually take another index card and cut it down to be the right size in here. So let's just try that. Because um, what did I do in this one? I took a page from a, I took a pretty picture from a book page and I tore it out the right size and I glued it on to seal everything down. Oh, excuse you. Um, right from the back of, um, no, from another picture from a book, Sweet Leaved Geraniums. Thought it was a really pretty picture. And uh, I should actually show it to you like this better. Um, you can put those to seal the back down. Okay, so now we'll use a, um, and you could use it either way. You could actually give like a solid back and you could do this with white too. That would look very cool. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here is grab my pencil decide how wide I want this and how tall. If you keep it in one spot without moving it like I am, then you can actually do this measurement pretty easily. And I would recommend cutting something else, like a hundred things on the back of my magnetic ruler, um, which I, I never really use the magnetic part of it. It just is more of a problem in the way than anything. So, I mean, some of you might find it handy, but I'm not this girl. Okay, uh, so I think I'm gonna take two of these and just cut them the same length and so they're the same and since I don't have any place to do my I have no room I'm just going to use scissors and try and follow the line wishing me luck wishing me luck wishing me luck okay and you could also use um maybe fancy Fiskar scissors and give this a pretty border that would be nice too okay but I just want to make sure I have enough to cover the space does it cover yes it covers okay so let's go ahead and glue that down all right, so these covers come together pretty quickly and, and you can do these in a million and one ways, uh, but this is just one easy way to do them. So get your front and back covers handled first. There's my front cover. And what did I, did I make it blank? Yeah, I did the blank. Okay, so I'll go do the blank as well. And we'll leave all the lines for the index cards on the inside as writing space. That way we could put pockets or something else, so maybe a, I don't know, an ex libris stamp or something like that. We just have more um, variety we can do. Oh, we're a little shy on that one side. Now this is a little bit smaller than I need, so I need a little bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the universal grand crafter's tool of cover up. Yes, that's right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to cover it up. I could do that with a lot of different things. I could do it with an extra piece of... Uh, uh, scrap lying around just cover the borders with that that would be very cute and very easy if i have a thin piece of um, lace here i have a very thin piece of lace i could just lace that there and then lace that over there which is what i think i'm going to do i think that will be very pretty um, okay and that will cover up this little area that wasn't planned on being shown so there we go now let's see down, down. Okay, we are in position and we need the chomper. Come on over here. Chomp. It's not really a, a fabric scissor. That's my fabric scissor sitting there under the other two, three scissors that you can see. Oops, stick into the fingers. Okay, there we go. All right, and we're off. Okay, and let's just do the other side. Okay, here we go. All right. 
And then we're just going to trim this up. I'm going to grab the fabric scissors now so I look like I know what I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. And we are good. Okay, so I went ahead and I glued the other side and now magically that little issue is gone. <laughs> okay, so we have this as the front, the inside covers, and the back. Okay, so I think I want to take this up a little bit of a notch and I'm going to ink it up with black soot. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, there's that. Coming out of the mail, the mailbox. <laughs> Superman coming out of the mailbox. I think it's because I go to the mailbox. Um, <laughs> Superman coming out of the the booth music, I've been told. Um, I, I wish I felt like Superman coming out of the booth. Uh, I don't feel like that most of the time, but <laughs> that would be really nice. Um, okay, so we have that. That's good. Now maybe I want to darken this a little bit so it matches. I go around. I'll, even though I know it's colored. I am going to just knock it back a bit so there is some uniformity, conformity, that type of thing. So we have the back and the front, and there we go. All right, so that was easy enough, right? So next, what we want to do is get a bunch of index cards for the center, which I have stealthily placed, I have stealthily hidden from myself. Yes, I did have a bunch out here. Okay, where are you? All right, well, all right, let me get some. Hang on, I got a million of these things. Okay, I have managed to gather 10 of the, oh, they're sitting right in front of me. Here they are, see all of them. But I have counted 10. So I think that's gonna be a nice contrast with the white in the front um, and this one. So I'm gonna assemble the book as if it was a book. So I'm gonna put the front cover on the front. The middle is the 10 pages of index cards and then the back cover, just like it would appear in the book. And it's probably a good idea to pop on a few Paper clips here just to secure it while you're going to punch the holes. This just keeps everybody all in line, all in the same place. And uh, we go from there together as a happy family. Here we are bringing out Crocodile 2 Big Bite. Let me zoom back a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to punch three holes. Now, I'm going to eyeball these. You can measure these. I'm going to actually use my craft mat to give me um, an, an estimate guess of where they should be. So that's about the middle. And that's about the one inch area, half inch area, and that's about the other half inch area. So I'm going to call that good. Okay. So now I'm just going to punch the holes with the three sixteenths. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the three sixteenths. It's, it's all the way to the right, not there, not there, all the way to the right. That's going to bring down the, the big chomper. Can you see the big chomper? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to big chomp, punch three big holes here. It just seems to work best in my world. Um, okay. And I would say that was about, like, it's pretty, you know, okay with that number. So you're talking actually 10 in the middle, 10 index cards, then one for the cover, one for the front cover, one for the back cover, plus wrapping it with something, and then adding the index cards on the inside. So you're talking 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 like 15, 16. So it's like 16 pages it's going through. Okay, I didn't I didn't get them in the right spot exactly. I rarely do. But sometimes things just still work anyway. Uh, not always, but sometimes. <laughs> Try for uh, aiming them in a line. That would be behoove. It would behoove you. And so now what I, I'd like to do is take it apart again. We've got to take it apart so we can put the eyelets on. Now the eyelets are not mandatory. They're just for decorative effect. But I think they're kind of cute. And um, I... Uh, it took me a while to figure out exactly which um, eyelet uh, squasher parts would work on the Crocodile 2 Big Bite, but I'll show you the ones that my default ones that I always use. And I always get the big 3 16th eyelets because they fit the machine and, and things seem to go well. As I'm saying that, I can't get this through the hole. There it's through. Okay. Um, if you get other sizes and I don't know what the conversion is, um, I have I've run into trouble. So if I just buy the ones that say three sixteenths and I always use the same two things, I seem to be okay. So I'm going to put these on the front and the back. Remember, put them on the back of the back and the front of the front, the back of the back and the front of the front. I'm going to use silver. Just thinks pretty. Okay, I think it'll look nice against this design. And this is uh, the hardest part. It shouldn't be the hardest part. I probably didn't do something right. Or maybe I'm trying to force an eyelet that is not the right size because there's some of the other eyelets that I bought 
and ended up in a disaster. That could be, you never know, my eyelets may have commingled. That could happen. See, that one went right through. No problem. And here's the oddball. Out of line. There's always one, you know, in my world. All right, so here we go. Now, um, the eyelet squasher of the Crocodile 2 Big Bite is found by sliding this blue thing all the way to the left, okay, if you're uh, right-handed. And I use the big number. See, there's a big number, okay? And then the silver um, flying disc. It looks like a flying saucer. That one. Those two will happily squash the 3 16 eyelets with not too much fuss. So we will put this in the front, make sure the little nubber goes in, and squash down. Okay, there we go. Yep, very good. All is well in eyelet land. It's uh, pretty much no fail as long as you remember those little points and how the rest of this thing works. Nobody knows. <laughs> Maybe somebody. I know a lot of us have studied the instructions and still come out squirrely eyed. So there you go. I just, you know, find one thing that works and, and just stick with it. That's what, that's my best recommendation. Um, or feel free to add tips if you know how those other magical things work. I've never figured it out. Um, some of them give you longer shanks, you know, if you squash them. And uh, some, I don't really always want a longer shank. I usually like the short shank. But chunk, long shanks could, you know, well, I'm just going to stop that conversation right here. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, so the white here. Okay, so now, 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 we need to grab ourselves some jump rings. Okay. Okay, I'm back. And what did I grab? What did I grab? I grabbed three little tiny jump rings. They're from jewelry making. And these particular ones are probably extra cheapo ones that I got um, on eBay or Amazon or something. And they, um, they're very easy to bend apart. Okay, which is nice when you are making stuff, but not nice when you want it to stay closed because sometimes pieces of paper can slide out and things like that. So it can be very frustrating. So the big tip and trick of this video is how to get those to stay closed so you don't lose your mind after you make your journal, your little booklet and all the pages come out. Um, yes. Okay. So assemble your book as such as in the order that it will go. And I'd probably slap a paper clip on it just to keep everybody in one place and we're not running around chasing our tails as we sometimes do. And, um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take one jump ring and we're gonna open it. Okay, don't pull it apart. You wanna open it like that, okay? So that's what it looks like, okay. And then you come here and you just uh, thread that guy through. You wanna make sure you're close enough when you punch your holes to the edge, but not so close that you come off the edge because your, your ring has to be able to reach. Oh, these rings are, um, I'll tell you exactly what they are. I'll show you. That'll probably be better. Here, oh, you're close, okay. So I'll put the jump ring down and I'll measure. Okay, it's like half an inch. I would say these are half inch jump rings, okay. You want to see it in metric? I can just turn this over and show you there. Let me see if I can line up the edge. Okay. All right. It's grabbing it because it's magnetic, causing trouble. There you go. Looks like one centimeter approximately. Okay. Or pretty close to their butts. Don't quote me. I'm not, not converting for anybody. No. <laughs> okay. So now you closed your jump ring. You can do this with um, jewelry scissors if you have the really stiff jump rings. Jewelry scissors. Where, what planet am I on? Uh, jewelry pliers. If you... Uh, I'm going to show you. Where, where are they? Oh, oh, did I bring them back? Oh, no. No, can't find them. Okay, that's all right. Um, jewelry pliers. They're tiny pliers. Or... Um, just use your fingers if it's uh, easily movable. Okay, so you have one. And at this point, you want to grab a thin piece of washi tape, all right? And I'll just grab a little thin piece, maybe take off an inch and a half or so. And then with your readers on, you're gonna come along, you're going to lift this up enough so there's distance in between it and the book and you're gonna slide that little piece in there. And wherever that little split is, you're gonna cover it with washi tape. Now, if you're adept enough to, um, and dexterous enough to wrap it around, which I have no idea how you do that, um, around, 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 you could do that to cover it. But I'm using a very uh, well-known, this is not well-known, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do this, uh, but cheater method of just uh, covering it with the washi tape and clipping a little bit to seal it in. Okay, so that's, that's what I have. 
It's nothing fancy, but it is what it is, and it serves a purpose. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the same process with these two. Ready? Just go this way. Yeah, we're not separating the ends like this. We're just rotating this way. Okay, now we go ahead and try and do the same thing with this. And if they're not wide enough, you make it a little wider. They're pretty pliable, these softies. Um, okay, here we go. We're realigning. You just bring it right back, and it actually you go past a little bit, and the spring back in the metal will bring it back to the right spot. Can you see that? Okay, we do the same thing. We search the desk again for the missing washi. We find the missing washi. Even though we're wearing our readers, we found it. Yay! I mean, thank goodness we're wearing our readers. That's why we found it. Okay, so I can see the little connection. I really need my super strongs for this. This may require the super strong readers, folks. It may require the 4.0s. I know, I know, I know. Sometimes we have to pull them out. Um, and it's okay. I want you to know that it's okay. As crafters, we, we unite and we wear readers and it's okay. Not everybody wears readers, I know, but uh, all roads lead to Rome. You know what I'm saying? You'll get there. <laughs> you can't just give it enough time. Okay, here we go. There, a little tail. And then give the little tail a little squeeze, <laughs> as we do in life. <laughs> and then, uh, here we go. One more. Mm -hmm. And Hey, I, I squeeze Sunny's tail. It's, it's all PG here. Okay. <laughs> she does. She squeezes my tail. I know. I know. <laughs> want to make sure you're live every once in a while. Okay. All right. Here we go. And there we go. Okay. We've aligned. Now we look again voraciously for the missing washing tape, which thankfully is found. I really need the 4.0s. Okay. Our one and a half inch piece. And then we lift it up now and we slide it under. Whoops. Oops, oops, back where we go. It's a little wiggly, but it can be done if you're slow and methodical and you were wearing your 4.0s. Everything would be going just fine, just fine, I tell you. Here we go, get under there. So it's a little sticky, so it's thwarting me. No thwarting. Okay, I see you've come through. I will grab you. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now make sure you wrap the little split part. That's probably the most important thing. Okay, stay still. It came out. All right. Yeah, that's the way it's going to go today. All right. Okay, here we go. Find the split. I see the split. I see the split. I'm going to load the washi through. Go through. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to futz on this for a bit, aren't we? Okay, here we go. <laughs> go. Go. Oh, I think I have too much of a bendy end. Let me, let me start anew. We'll just leave you stuck to my finger. Uh, let's start anew. A shorter piece, but everything's going to be okay. We're just going to breathe through it. Yeah. All right. If it doesn't go through, I'm getting my 4.0s. That's all there is to it. Okay. There we go. Yeah. See, it should it should go easily like that. Making sure I've got the split there somewhere in that washi tape, and then squash it. Doesn't have to be a perfect alignment because you're going to trim it in a little bit, so it's okay. Then you squash the tail as promised, and uh, there goes Hot Papa walking by. It's starting to make dinner. I, I have a role in dinner as well. We're, we're sharing the duty tonight. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really trying to eat healthier. Okay, um, so now you could leave these little tags and there's nothing wrong with those. I mean, they're what they are. You know, they're kind of cute and they're sort of decorative. But if you want to take it up a notch um, and, and uh, hide those little pieces of um, washi tape plastic, we use the old disguise method and one disguise method I used was just tie some this has yarn and uh, lace with it so I found some thin lace if you ever come across thin lace I would recommend grabbing it because you'll be finding in the junk journal world it is so handy it is just so handy so if you do come across them we're going to need three pieces I would probably say like four inches long would be plenty two, three, and then you might want to grab a coordinating or a contrasting uh, piece of yarn of some sort because it, it can also work nicely here. So this is a, a whitish yarn with um, a gold thread in it. So I'll probably do the same thing here. So, okay, I have no idea if these are exactly the same length, but they're pretty darn close and we will go with that. Yeah, and then we need one more. Okay, there. All right, so we'll put that entire clump there. Can you see, am I still in frame? Okay, and I'm gonna take one yarn and one lace and, and make them like a needle point if I can. And all I wanna do, I can actually use the little tag as a holder now. Now it's become my friend. And I can use this to thread 
that underneath. So that wasn't so bad. No, and then all I did was I tied it in a bunch of knots. You could also tie it in a bow. That might be cute. Maybe you want to work with longer strings. I don't think these are long enough to do a bow, but I think a bow would be very cute. Can I do a bow? No, nah, I'd be fussing too much. Okay, I'm going to do four knots. Mm -hmm. You should probably do opposite knots, right over left, left over right, but this is not a big stress point, and this is very rough material, so I'm feeling good that these are going to lock in place. Is that number three? Oh, well, maybe we'll just do three knots. And you could keep going. You could add more, and you can decide how long they want to be after. Um, I would recommend putting them all on first and then decide your length at the end so that when you cut them, you can cut them um, either the same length or, you know, tight, not titrating, um, graduated lengths, things like that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Whoops. I got one through. Hey, that counts. That counts. In crafting world, you get in there with the other one. If you have a little, like, tiny um, pokey tool or something, that would help here. Okay, we got it. All right. It's not that fussy, really. It's just I'm all fumble fingers today. I am all fumble fingers. What's that, Sunny? You're always fumble fingers. Uh, hey, thanks for the uh, support. You left. Yeah, I, mean, like, I think I'm just hearing him in my head. Can you imagine that? He's not even really here making, speaking. Um, he left the vicinity probably because Papa is making dinner and I cannot compete with food. <laughs> That's right. I know my place and it is nowhere to be found when there are snacks about. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know it. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to get him to eat his kibble and he's like, oh, this is the most boring stuff in the world. Can I please have what's on your plate? Um, yep, yep, that's the way it goes. All right, here we go. You know, you know, those of you with pets and kids, you've been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think I've told this story, but my mother used to always, uh, we'd go to the ice cream shop and, and I'd get this ridiculous flavor, like rainbow bubble gum, you know, peppermint barf. <laughs> and she'd get, you know, pralines and cream or something logical, like rum raisin or something, you know, butterscotch when, when that was a popular flavor. And, um, She'd always end up giving me hers because I'd have a lick off of hers and I'd decide that hers was always better and she'd end up eating the awful one. So, Mom, I really want to thank you for eating all that horrible tasting ice cream that I just had to have. Best mom ever award. Best mom ever. Um, I'm just trimming these down a little bit so they're not so hairy scary, but you could like leave them long and loosey or however you want to do it. I just a uh, quick trim. Quick trim. <laughs> And there we go. So we're pretty much finished. So you have a little um, index card booklet, which is made with jump rings. Very easy to make. It opens and closes very easily. Um, any page, it will open nice and flat for you. And that's uh, very functional. It's great. It would be great for recipes. If you wanted to make a little recipe booklet, maybe to put in people's stockings for Christmas, wouldn't that be nice? Um, give them all your old, um, all the old family recipes and something like that. That would be a very cool thing. And uh, I think maybe I'll just put some, something simple on the front because it's so pretty the way it is. Um, I don't really want to mess with it at all, actually. Uh, I kind of like this guy's signature, though. Maybe we can use him again. Oh, I found some signatures on an old page in a book, and I just think they're they're kind of pretty. Let's see. Should I do that? See, this is uh, D.B. Robertson, international president. I'm, I'm sure he's very important. And if this is his book, that could be super cool. Because, um, you know, D.B. Robertson would definitely have a book like this being as important as he is. Well, it could be Deborah. It could be Deborah, right? Right. Um, <laughs> all right. So that one I made a butterfly. This one will be D.B. Robinson Robertson, the international president of the Index Card Booklet Association. Good for you, D.B. All right. So it doesn't take much. You know what I mean? Sometimes just a little piece of paper, um, a little uh, piece of book page, a couple of index cards, a few jump rings. A little lace, a little thread. I mean, you, you've got this stuff. Go, look, You look around the house. You've got little pieces and parts. You do. And if not, you borrow it from your friends and your family. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I hope you had fun. And um, remember that, um, oh, I do have more um, fundals available if anybody is interested in those. They're the hard copy, um, interesting old antique ledger, um, old postcards, old tea cards, things like that. There's also some... Um, 
um, interesting book pages, some hand dyed page, pages, some uh, music pages, some dictionary pages, foreign pages, nature pages, um, just a nice collection of uh, very cool papers uh, to get you started. If you are, uh, you know, wandering down the junk journal path and you're interested in getting, um, you know, different kinds of paper, different looks and texts for font and things like that, they're available in my Etsy shop along with my vintage digital kits, which are available there. And... Um, my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they um, are new material, new audio, different from the videos. My, I have a free monthly email newsletter where you get a free digital image, plus a note from the bookmaker, plus a list of junk journal supplies, um, a junk journal tip, and a... Um, um, uh, updates from me yeah and um the paper outpost facebook group come and join us we're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges and hanging out and making things from these videos um at my etsy shop i sell my fundals and my digi kits and sometimes big fat chunky monkey journals and sometimes bundles of uh, different types of uh, paper craft and um like maybe uh, clumps of journals and things like that just all clumps that's that's a great way to uh, uh promote your product man um, okay, moving on. We uh, have an Amazon shop. So if you're looking for uh, tools and supplies that you see me use here, you're going to find links to um, most of those. I do my best to put all the links in my Amazon shop for you. And you can find me on interest, interest, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the links are in my drop down box below. If you find value here, please like subscribe and share and click the notification bell. And remember that fun can be simple and just create with reckless abandon everybody why not it feels so darn good take care everyone bye bye